Having read this report last night, I was up, uh, uh, my, my trust levels were very low this morning. I was tempted to invite the person at reception to give me a newspaper, but I was scared about this in case they offered me the Irish Times. <laughs> but, uh, and uh, this thing about, uh, we accompany the word banker in our paper with a very familiar word, which describes it as an adjective, uh, an adjective. Um, but I, I have to admit that I do have friends who are bankers, and uh, it's not very popular at the moment. And I'm, I think I've even one in the audience there, so there's no need to identify yourself, Kevin. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> Look, this thing about trust is all well and good. We've had too much trust in this country. We've had too much uh, obsequiousness. We've had too much of it for decades and decades and decades. We can't even recognize the faults and the failings in our political leaders. Michael Collins is eulogized as one of the greatest uh, heroes of the Freedom Campaign, and he was. But he also engaged in extrajudicial murder. He also engaged in the capture and the kidnapping of hundreds of people in Northern Ireland post-treaty. Orna Duffy was on the brink of organizing a coup in the late 20s, early 30s. This is not new. We should never have trusted these people. You can never trust power, especially when it mingles after a long time with business. And we've seen this in the Catholic Church. We have seen it in the banking structures. We've seen it in politics. And we've seen it in the builders and developers and the tents. We have lived through, and we are now bearing the cost of a massively corrupt society. I never actually thought I'd say that. I thought that was for Eamon Dunphy to be um, proselytizing me on for years and years and years until it became so goddamn evident. This is what the business community, in collaboration with the power structures, have done to this country. They have given us a royal going over. And the great thing about Andy Kenny's speech is, to my recollection, he didn't use the word power once. He spoke about service. The political establishment in this country has been constantly talking about power. When we get power, when we are in power, they're never in office. They're never at the service of the people of this country, like they should be. Some of us were stupid enough to believe that the original founding fathers meant it when they said that we were the sovereign people. But that's not where the game was ever played. The people were set to one side, and they're going to be set to one side again. Andrew Kenny has gone off organizing his own manifesto. So will Eamon Gilmore. We won't even know what these people come up with after an election. Surely we're entitled to that. So we're going to have these people in dark rooms with the people of Ireland excluded. And they will come up with their own negotiated compromise after this election. Is that what we're buying in for now? I don't think that's fair to the people of Ireland who've been put through the mill. And what has happened in this country is not a victimless crime. There are people out there suffering the most profound damage at the moment. People will literally die because of what has happened. Waiting lists will get longer. People won't get service. People will kill themselves over what has happened. My mother had this great thing, you know, and she knew what she was talking about, that when poverty comes in the door, love flies out the window, and it does. The stresses and strains now that are emerging in families up and down the country, in apartments, in blocks half built, where you have no neighbors, where your property isn't finished off. It's enough to drive the sanest person nuts. Where your children are immigrating, where we're spending hundreds of thousands educating doctors and exporting them to Perth and Sydney. 70 or 80,000 training nurses and they're over in Croydon general. What kind of a country have we created at all? And it's the elites that did this. It isn't the sheep farmer out in Larrick uh, and Pawn or Guinea Willa. 
that cause this problem. It's us in the suits. It's our peers. I often wondered what I often asked him. Well, a few points of encouragement said to me, what the hell did you do, Dad, during the Second World War? How did you want to run top saving mankind during probably the last great war where you could see black and white? But what did we do when we saw this corruption going on? A lot of us put the snouts in the trough like the rest of them. And we benefited. And the only reason it stopped is because inevitably it had to. Because it couldn't go on because there was a pyramid system. Uh, business people in Ireland, <coughs> bankers, developers, the great and the good, the people who are lionised in RTE and the Irish Times, who have been very late to the party in terms of tackling the power centres. These are the people that they lionised. These are the people who have, of their own making, destroyed the country. Destroyed the country. Ruined lives. 200,000 of our people are going to be expelled in the greatest act of ethnic cleansing since Madich clears Srebrenica. They're gone. And they'll be gone for a long time. That's the kind of residue that is left for us here in this benighted country. And then we have, we have still the pretense. They, are, they can't be that stupid. Fianna Fáil leaders, they still won't admit that they messed up Riley. We had De Vogue on Vincent Brown last night, and he blathering on about something. These people should be put on their knees at the butt of Crow Patrick and invited to, to go to the top in atonement. They shouldn't ever be allowed back in power, as they call it, the use of the people's power. The book stops with government in a representative democracy. In some ways, I don't blame the bankers at all. I don't blame the business community, because bankers do what bankers do. Even Shawnee Fitz does what Shawnee Fitz does. I don't think, actually, he set out to ruin the country. If he did, he wasn't very smart about it, because he left hundreds of millions of shares in his own bank that subsequently collapsed. I don't think he intended. But he did, because of hubris and ability and a light-touch regulation by these famous people, the Michael McDowells and the Mary Harneys. Well, now we see what the result of those great heroes are. I mean, has he been re 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 I, mean, I get that. Rehabilitated at the moment. I'll, I'll, end. I'll end now. I would invite the parties to let us know what is happening pre-election. Are we going to be excluded again? <coughs> and the one thing that is really getting my goat at the moment is the likes of Jim, um, our Ed Watch, on the right-hand side of Kingus Can, and he wants a list system. He doesn't want this inconvenience of going to people's doors and inviting them to support him in representative democracy. No, he wants to be appointed straight off, and probably straight into government as well. These are the people that produce the people who run the country. I think that's about it at the moment. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>